Hello everyone, I'm just another Sam and this is every level in Strawberry Jam's beginning lobby ranked from least favorite to favorite. Strawberry Jam is a gigantic mod made for one of my favorite games of all time, the 2018 Platformer Celeste. I've actually been working on this video since the mod came out in February of 2023, proving I really need to work on my time management skills. Before we start the list, I just want to give a little disclaimer for the stuff at the bottom of the list, even though I can be a little harsh, Everyone that worked on these levels did an amazing job, regardless of my opinion. With that said, let's get started. Number 21, Dropsel. Someone put a puzzle level on my platformer and I do not approve. Look, I'm sure some people must love this level, but this is just so not my speed, I'm positive we experience time differently. The goal of each screen in Dropsel is to organize the Kevins with a limited number of dashes so you can drop through the hole and not hit the spikes. It's a great concept in theory, but in practice, it's just one I can't get behind. Having my dash be limited is something that always bothers me, and only getting the exact amount needed means that you're one bad input away from restarting the puzzle. It's not that bad at the beginning when you have about two dashes to solve the puzzle, but when you get to the end and you see a 12 pop over your head, then you'll start to see what I'm talking about. Add to all of that a bland background and music that didn't really excite me, and I just didn't have the motivation to keep going. I honestly got more satisfaction from just falling through the hole without finishing the puzzle, which is an option that I took every chance I could get. Again, I'm sure people like this level, and if you like this level, all the power to you, but for those going into this blind, I would suggest getting a walkthrough ready. Number 20, The Squeeze. The only thing that puts this above Dropsel is the fact that it's an actual platforming level. Besides that, they are basically the same thing. The level design isn't really hard, so there isn't a lot of challenge. The setting uses stuff from Chapter 1, and there isn't any new gameplay mechanics. Even the music isn't really that exciting, and the gray tint they put over everything kind of makes me want to fall asleep. I don't think this level is designed bad, but compared to everything that's coming up, this one's just kind of boring. 19. Collapsing Skyline, or as I like to call it, the one where you wait a lot. Clearly, this is not a hard level, it's one of the greens, but for some reason, instead of being full of simple platforming challenges, it's mostly just waiting for platforms to move. Collapsing Skyline is full of those platforms from Chapter 6 that move when you dash. Those were fun in the base game, but here they kind of slow everything down. There's at least two sections where you're forced to use them to climb, and it grinds everything to a screeching halt. Also, this level is just full of beginner's traps where blocks will fall on you fast and without warning. I swear, I think the majority of my deaths on this level were because of those. If I had to say one positive about this level, I do like the part where you have to get the six mini strawberries in order to collect the big one. But besides that, I do not like this level. I'm sick of looking at it, I'm sick of talking about it, and I'm sick of listening to this drone that this level uses as music. Number 18, Seeing is Believing. I had a really hard time figuring out where to put this one. Just looking at it, you wouldn't be able to tell why it deserves to be this low. It just seems like a simple level, so why is it near the bottom of the list? One reason, in order to play this level properly, you need a second person, and how the hell are you gonna guess that before going into the level? The whole gimmick of this level is one person is blindfolded while the other tells you how to get through the screen. There is a way to play alone, but then your screen looks like this. When I played this level, I got very lucky that I was already on a Discord call with my friends so I could play it properly, but odds are, this is what you're gonna see, and because of that, I don't think it could go any higher. It's a real shame too, because played properly, this level is a lot of fun, but because it's the only one with a barrier for entry, it kinda has to go at the bottom of the list. Number 17, Over the City. You know what part of Celeste is a lot of fun? dashing. So what happens when you take that away? A painfully mediocre level. In this level, you make your way through, not with a dash, but these crystals that give you an extra jump. The blue ones will give you one, and the gold ones will give you three. A great mechanic to add to the overall moveset, but it does not work as a dash replacement. I think I only feel that way because they go away the minute you touch the ground. It just makes certain screens feel a lot more annoying than they really should be. One thing I really do like about this level, though, is the layout of the stage. It's pretty unique. There are a lot of screens that you visit twice, which gives off an odd sense of progression. Beyond that, though, it's kind of unremarkable. Before we move on, just I, I need to mention this. Why did they not change the hair color? I'm sorry, but the number of times I screwed up an easy screen because I thought I still had a dash is embarrassing. Make it blue! 
16. A Gift from the Stars Never before have I seen a stage start so good and end so bad. Immediately, this level is going to stand out because it starts with a story. A UFO has crashed and Madeline wants to explore it. That alone made me want to finish the level, but god was it tough to get through. At first, it seems like a normal level with a cool new time-stopping mechanic. You touch these orbs to refill your dash and to stop time until your hair turns blue. It seems like it's gonna be fun, but it doesn't take long until they show up. Oh god. Yup, it's another goddamn puzzle level here to ruin my fun. The goal of the level then becomes to have time stopped when you touch all of the switches. If you don't, then the exit's going to be blocked and you'll have to restart the entire screen. Add all of this onto the fact that the story never gets a proper conclusion, and you have something that I felt no shame in using a walkthrough to beat. 15. Azure Caverns, or at least that's how I think you pronounce it. Ugh. Oh my god. I'm sorry, this, this level it kind of puts me to sleep. I gotta finish this section before I go down. Alright, there's nothing wrong with this level, but it's so down the middle of the road, I forget all about it the moment that I hit the end. Dashing into these blocks to move them is not the most engaging mechanic, but it works, and being a green means that it's mind-numbingly easy. Alright, time for a nap. Wake me up when something interesting happens. 14. Soap. With this level, we are finally out of meh territory. Soap is literally just the core with a new set of paint. I'm not gonna lie, based on the name alone, I was kind of excited to play this one. I thought it was gonna be a level about sliding around and maybe some new bubble mechanics, but no, just the core with ice turned on. I mean, if I did miss something new, please let me know, but beyond that, I got nothing more to say. It's a good level, but it doesn't really do much to stand out. The fact that it's all stuff we've seen before means I couldn't really put it higher, but that doesn't take away from the screens being a lot of fun to complete. I just wish they didn't take that dash away. 13. Corsican City It's like chapter 1 and 8 did the fusion dance. All the best parts combined to make a fun level. The only reason that it can't go higher is because there's literally nothing new about it. The setting is from chapter 1 and it has the lava and ice mechanics from chapter 8. I did learn one thing from this level though, and that's the core mechanics are so much fun when you don't lose your goddamn dash. Flying around with the lava blocks is fun, and the few ice challenges aren't too difficult to figure out either. It's just a solid level that proves the dash improves everything. 12. Midnight Spire An entirely vertical level with shockingly good level design. There's no new gimmick once again, but the setting makes you feel like you're climbing a castle, which I thought was pretty cool. What brings it this high, though, is really the level design. I honestly think it would be much lower if it wasn't this good. With most vertical sections in the base game, you're not allowed to see the whole screen at once, leading to some cheap-feeling deaths. But here, all the obstacles tend to be on the horizontal plane, meaning that you'll be able to see everything at once. This gives you a good sense of what you need to do before you have to do it, which I always appreciate. Beyond that, I got nothing else to say. It's a neat level that ends right before it overstays its welcome. 11. Cassette Cliffs Remember those screens in the base game where you got the B-side tapes? Those were a lot of fun, so a level solely based on that concept sounds great, and for the most part it is. However, there are some moments where you see why they kept those to one screen in Vanilla Celeste. Each screen offers a fair challenge for you to accomplish with nothing game-changing being thrown your way. The only new things are the inclusion of green and yellow platforms, and these moving platforms that move and don't go back to point A after you get off them. I had a lot of fun with each screen, as it really doesn't give you any time to stop once you start, so getting from start to end feels amazing. There is one issue I have with this level, and unfortunately it's something from the base game too. That is, if you start one second late, you're not making it to the end. Like I said, this is an issue from before, but it's a lot more noticeable and annoying when you're dealing with it for a whole level. I also just wish they added something new, because overall it feels kind of basic. Cassette Cliffs is a fun and simple challenge that feels just one step away from greatness. 10. Forest Path From here, we got only new stuff. Forest Path is the level that probably disappointed me the most, which really sucks since it has one of my favorite new mechanics. Very early on, you encounter this dash crystal that turns your basic dash into what I'm calling a dreamy dash. This means that anything you dash into will act like a dream block. That is an amazing concept that is unfortunately stuck in this very meh level. 
Being a green, there isn't much to talk about with difficulty. In fact, I think this may be the level I had the least trouble with. The design is very basic and surprisingly tight. You don't really have a lot of options to complete the screens or a lot of opportunities to play around with the Dreamy Dash, and I think that's what really hurts this level. Dreamy Dash is such a cool concept though, I think for that alone, Forest Path deserves to be in the top 10. I just really wish there was a more fun level built around it. 9. Loopy Lagoon A perfect introduction to Strawberry Jam. I feel like this is the first level most people would find, and it really gives off that vibe. To me, this level is a lot like dipping your toes in the water before jumping in. A decent length and a fun bouncing mechanic really gives it the feel of being between base and mod gameplay. The main selling point of Loopy Lagoon are these colorful blocks, which apparently remind my girlfriend of moldy Fruit Loops. How does she know what they look like? No idea, but that's not important. They bounce you like the clouds do, and dashing into them flies you across the screen. Besides that, you got a bright and colorful environment with some relaxing music to let you know you're not in for anything hard. 8. Troposphere This is the prime example of a great level that gets hurt by one small detail. On the surface, this level is great since it revolves around a combo of dream blocks and the part of you launching you around. Throw in like one or two feathers for some reason and you have what seems like an amazing level, so why is it so low in the top 10? Well, this may just be a me thing, but the design screws with the new mechanic. That mechanic being a dream block that gives you a double dash. Sounds awesome, right? Well, here's what a normal dream block looks like, and here's the double dash one. Now look at the overall color design of the level. It's all purples and pinks. This means, for me at least, when you're flying around, it's hard to tell the difference. Sometimes I would dash through not realizing that I'll come out with two dashes, and in the panic, I make a mistake and die. What sucks even more is that the problem is so easy to fix in my opinion. Just put the double dash crystal outside the dream block. Sure, you would lose your cool new mechanic, but it would kind of fix the one issue I have with this level. Oh well, still gives me more dream blocks, so I'm happy. I swear to god though, I don't want to see any of this dash into the small area and then immediately dash out shit in the next lobby. 7. If my driveway did you in. Blocks go zoom. That's honestly the best way to describe all this. Besides the name being a neat reference to a line from the base game, the new mechanic in this was honestly a lot of fun. See these lines? When you cross them, certain blocks will move. From there, you get thrown like a football across the screen, and that always brings me joy. Wee! Besides that, there's not much to driveway, but does there really need to be? If it had a more unique setting, then I think I would probably put it higher, but for what it is, I think this is the perfect placement. 6. Switch to Vista Well, this one definitely stands out. When it comes to mechanics, there isn't really much to say. You got tubes and you got some switches. The tubes work like dream blocks, but with zero chance of death, so that's a plus for me. As for the switches, I love these things. They make such a good noise when you dash into them. I could just listen to it all day. Hitting them changes what platforms you can touch and makes for some fun screens that really test your stamina management. The setting is also a highlight with its brightly colored urban factory aesthetic. It clearly takes some influence from Mega Man in terms of style and music. In fact, the name of the track used in this level is even called Mega Madeline, so it's not a secret as to what inspired the creators. All of this just works, and unlike the Reds before, the challenge feels fair and fun to accomplish. Now, if only they gave Madeline a Mega Buster, then we would have had something awesome on our hands. 5. Rose Garden this is just a happy level. It's definitely one of the more visually interesting things in the beginner lobby. Rose Garden's whole gimmick revolves around, what else, roses. When you carry them, they act like the jellyfish from Farewell as they slow down your fall. But the difference is, roses have three charges that give you massive vertical height when used. They remind me of those flowers from Mario Galaxy, but these are a little more fun to use as everything happens faster. Speaking of Mario Galaxy, I think the music sounds a lot like it too. So clearly I like this level, so what's keeping it out of the top 4 spot? Well, it's honestly that it's too short and easy. Just as I thought the challenge was gonna start, the level was over. That's kind of annoying to me, but I guess it's a good thing that my biggest complaint about this is that there wasn't enough. 4. Tree Hive These crazy bastards somehow found a way to make dream blocks even better. A task I previously thought impossible. At first, this seems like a normal dream block level until you get to this part. With no other option, you dash into the wall expecting death like normal, but instead, 
you bounce back. Just that one simple change, just making the walls bounce you instead of kill you, opens up a realm of possibilities that Treehive takes full advantage of. I really don't think there's a single bad screen in this whole level, and the feeling of bouncing around never gets old. Clearly, I love this level, so why is it not any higher? Simple reason, as much as I love this level, I just enjoyed the next three a little bit more. 3. Potential for Anything This hurt my brain in the best way possible. A healthy mix between platformer and puzzle, Potential for Anything will test you like no other level in this lobby. The main gimmick in this one is a gravity swap mechanic. Throughout, you'll have to hit these squares in order to swap your gravity. Thankfully though, your controls remain the same, meaning that if you want to dash down while gravity is flipped, you still press down. I love the way it's used, and it's surprisingly easy to get a hang of. As the level goes on, you get more and more to play with. There are these white lines that also swap your gravity, but passing fully through them takes away your dash. Despite it being a take away your dash mechanic, I actually really liked it. My favorite part though is when you get to this screen and it just looks like a dead end, but if you jump, this happens. That put the biggest smile on my face, and completing a screen where all three are used at once just feels amazing. Something else that puts this level above the rest is just its whole aesthetic. To me, this is how Dropsville should have looked. Colorful, yet still simplistic. This whole aesthetic reminded me of that game 6V, or however you pronounce it. Actually, isn't this screen ripped directly from that game? Anyways, back to the level. The only issue in my mind is the difficulty. I think it's way too easy for a yellow, but I guess that's what comes with making an upside down level that isn't frustrating. I think if this level had some high speed sections, it may have topped the list, but being in third is not bad either. 2. Strawberry Orchard This is by far the most shocking level to me. The moment it started and I saw that Theo gem shaped jar of jam, I thought I was gonna hate this level. I still have the nightmares. By the end though, I was shocked how upset I was that this level was over. It is amazing how great the Theo gem mechanic is when you don't have to deal with enemies. The goal of Strawberry Orchard is to carry the jar all the way to the end and each screen is just filled with springs and tubes. You throw the jam into the tubes and you race to catch it. I think that's what makes this all so enjoyable. The fact that each screen is essentially a race between you and the jar urges you to keep the speed up so it doesn't fall into the spikes. The whole combo of flying around and catching the jar at the right time just makes you feel like a god. Take all of that and add some fun and hectic music and Strawberry Orchard just makes you want to keep moving. It's all just pure adrenaline pumping fun and for that alone it deserves this spot. 1. Paint From what I've read, there's a general consensus that this is the best level in the beginner lobby, and I 100% agree. Paint is Celeste Perfection, a level that immediately stands out for A having a story and B taking place in a city. The story is all about the part of you convincing Madeline to go on a walk and take their mind off a project that they've been working on. From there, you take a relaxing, yet still challenging and invigorating walk throughout the city. Unlike A Gift from the Stars, this story actually has a conclusion, and it feels right in line with the main themes of Celeste. But back to the level itself. This is by far the longest one in the lobby, even including those checkpoints like on the summit. Paint doesn't add anything new in terms of ways to get around. The only new things added are these light bulb switches that refill your dash when you hit them. Besides that, all the other additions are new obstacles for you to avoid. There's these energy shots, these beams, and sliding tapes that can be also used to launch you across the screen. All of these obstacles are also in time with the music, which is an absolute banger. The way it builds and builds to become more triumphant the further you get really makes you feel like you can do anything. All of this is enhanced by the setting, which really ties everything together. Like I said before, paint has you traveling through a city that's absolutely teeming with life. Look at them. They're perfect. This city is just amazing to travel through. Besides just being fun to travel through and nice to look at, there are secrets everywhere that urge you to explore. Some of the secrets are strawberry, some of them have some inspirational words for you, and others are just there for fun. I need to get in there! The design, perfect. The challenge, perfect. I think this level is just absolutely perfect. If I had to nitpick, the only issue is that when you die, the music stops for a bit, which kind of takes you out of the immersion. But to me, that's such a small detail that I do not care. Paint is so good, it's not only my favorite level in the beginner lobby, it's also one of my favorite things ever made in Celeste. 
Hello everyone, thanks for watching. If you like what you saw, leave a like and hit that subscribe button so you can be notified when the next video comes out. I hope you guys enjoyed. This video is a little different than what I usually make, but I wanted to try something new. So leave a comment down below and let me know, do you guys like this style of video and want to see more of it, or do you guys just want me to go back to screaming? Anyways, as always, don't forget to check out my podcast, My Parents Basement, if you want to see it live, we record it every Tuesdays on Kick, but if you don't care, it comes out the next day on Spotify. Alright, I'm done. See y'all next time.